Step three, squaring your car. We have broke these videos down into shorter segments to make them a little more watchable, uh, maybe a little more easier to process because they're not quite as long. There is a long version and a short version. So step three, square in the car. Okay, square in the car is very important. And it seems to be like you're going to maybe look at it as a task that maybe doesn't need to be done, but is very important to understand. And when I say square in the car, what does that mean? I mean, square understanding where the tires are in relationship to the center line of the car. So in most cases, we square the car to the motor plate. So in this process, step three, part one, is understanding where the front tires are. Do I have a turn stub car? Hopefully, hopefully in your car, your motor plate is square to the chassis. And shame on you, chassis builders, if you put the motor plate in there crooked. And if your motor plate is in there crooked, I suggest you guys find out why. Why did the chassis builder put it in there crooked? Okay, demand an answer, because well, I would kind of like to know. If the answer is, well, it's going to free the car up at full speed because the drive shaft's in line with the, the motor, the transmission, and that's all straight in line when the car's steered up and all that. What is that going to gain us? What is it really, truly going to gain us? Theoretically, it's going to gain us speed because there's less buying. Okay. But to have your U joints in line means that they're always going to be out of alignment. They're never going to be in alignment. There's going to be one spot they're in a line, and the rest of the time they're going to be unaligned. So here again, when we're going down the straightaway, maybe we're in alignment, but in the corner, the most important part of the racetrack, out of alignment. So where is it most important? As I've always said, no matter how crappy your car is, you can make it go down the straightaway. Just remember that. Where are my front tires? Is my front stub turned? Why do I need to know this? Well, I need to know this because I need to know how to handle it if it's turned too much. And what's turned too much? Well, anything over an inch is probably starting to be turned too much. Is a turn stub a bad thing? No, not necessarily. But you need to understand what you need to do with it if you have a turn stub. We raced a two inch turn car one time and we never would have sprung it up enough to make it work because of our mental block. We wouldn't have done it. Uh, two, we didn't have a spring probably to do it with. But knowing that, you know, knowing now what we know, knowing we will spring it up, we will put the spring in the car to make the car a little more active. And we'll take advantage of what the turn stub is allowing the car to do without losing the right front completely. So understanding where it is, is my stub turn or do I have poor lower control arms, whether they're aftermarket or stamped OEM stuff, we need to know if the, if the, the, the stubs turn or if the arms are jacked up. Okay, I've seen both and I've seen, you know, a turn stub in the wrong direction. I've seen many of them turned in the wrong direction. So we need to know, excuse me, we need to know where those front tires are at. Okay, that's part three, step one, understanding where the front tires are. Part three, step two, understanding where the rear tires are. So when we first start out the air, we will square the car. We'll square it up. Uh, which means the rear end will be square in the car. And we may allow it to be square through the first scaling process. Okay, sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. Okay, and, and I get that whole deal because we're going to, we are going to race a car that has rear steer in the, in the, in the car. 
but sometimes it's just easier to scale the car squared up and get you know everything set in the car like it, the car needs to be it's just easier so um yeah a lot of times we do that we'll, we'll scale the car the first time out squared up but in this process we also need to understand how much the tire is moving so when we say we're a quarter trailed are we a quarter at the bars or are we a quarter at the tire so if we put two turns in uh, and i'll put some information in the in the link below or in the description uh, there will be a spreadsheet for this vi these videos um, uh, of our step breakdown and we'll put in there um, you know recommendations on you know one turn is so much two turns is so much but am i turned at the tire or am i turned at the bar so sometimes we're describing it at the bar but we act like it's at the tire so we just need to know so when we are battling and we're telling everybody we're three eighths turned but we're really barely a quarter that you know we understand really how much the tire is moving also it's a good idea to make some kind of maybe no-go gauge or a quick reference system for, that you can utilize throughout the year to reference where your rear end is weekly whether it's a plumb bobs um you know paint mark on the frame so you can plumb bob the rear end housing to see how much rear steer you have or if it's key stock that's welded on or a clamp that's applied you know we used to do a clamp system where we had clamps on we'd put plumb bobs on and we could easily tell our side to side our rear steer and our side to side instantly so make that simple and make it easy to do whether you do switch tubes and bolts and you put it in there and you go okay um the left rear is good the right rear is tick 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 you know um trailed so make it simple make it easy to do um and make you know and make it a tool guys like tools so uh put it in your toolbox make it a tool and use it weekly so understanding where your front tires are understanding where your rear tires are is a major deal and often they ain't where we think they are a lot of the times they are not where we think they are so make sure the car is squared up make sure you understand where the front stub is and make sure you understand what squaring the car is there are some other videos in our library of squaring the car okay it's a simple process um you know a couple pieces of angle and a tape measure and you're on your way so part three step three squaring the car very important very very important